Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. Uh, if it's your first time seeing one of my videos, um, I am an amateur uh, boat restorer, uh, just doing this in my spare time, nights and weekends. Been doing it for quite a while now. Uh, started in 2011 actually, uh, 2019 now. Um, and when I started the project, you know, it was just a project to get the boat in the water so my wife and I could use it. And um, it's turned into much more than that. Um, wasn't expecting to be doing this on YouTube. So all I did in the beginning was take pictures and so uh, for presenting uh, everything up till 2019, uh, I just have to be able to use the media I have, which is pictures. Um, so I narrate a little, do some diagrams once in a while, get the pictures out there, uh, put them to music, and um, tell the story um, of this boat restoration. I call it renovation, actually. Uh, so, anyways, that's how we've been going. That's the format we've been following all through since I started this channel. So um, if you want to check out the previous videos, if you like this one, um, check them out. You, there's some playlists there um, to try to make it easy to watch uh, chunks of videos if you want to binge a little bit. But anyways, um, anyways, hope you enjoy it and um, yeah, come back for more um, videos. Uh, so in this episode, yes, it's uh, 2017 projects. It's the second part uh, to 2017 projects. And um, in this video, I'm going to uh, show how I replace the cover boards and the trim that goes below the cover boards. Now, from the factory, um, both of these um, pieces and areas of wood were uh, teak. And um, anybody that's tried to buy teak knows that it's um, astronomical in price. And uh, with the scope of this project, I just can't afford teak. So I have to find alternatives. Now, some of the trim I've already done on the boat on the exterior I did in uh, Sapele Mahogany so I decided to do the trim part of this in Sapele Mahogany. Uh, the cover boards however I wanted to do something a little bit tougher than uh, mahogany um, and so I went with Ipe which I've used on the boat as well to do the uh, rub rails so you can uh, if you check out that uh, episode you can see that happening. Um, so I decided to do it here too. These, these boards sit right on top of uh, those boards that I've already finished for the rubber rails. So it was a natural thing to go uh, use the same material. Now he pays Brazilian hardwood. Uh, stuff will last forever. A um, bit hard on the tools because it is so hard. Um, and it's also heavy. Um, so you got to take that into consideration um, if you're going to use it um, for a weight sensitive type situation. Um, I'm not too worried about the weight here. It's not a ton of wood here I'm talking about. And I'm going to be lightening up the cockpit in other ways, so it's probably going to all going to balance out in the end. Um, so that's why I went with it. Um, so let's just get into the first project of the two, which is going to be the trim. And it might be some fancy name for this trim. I was going to call it combing, but I really don't think it's combing. So uh, anyway, I'm just going to call it trim. Um, so I used uh, some Pele mahogany, like I said before. Um, uh, it wasn't too difficult to do this trim. Um, the most difficult pieces were the pieces along the transom area. Uh, because of the camber of the whole thing, um, I would have had to get a really wide piece to make it out of one piece. So I cut a narrower piece in half and just kind of tweaked it to take care of the camber and lined up the grain in the center. So that's what you're going to see. Now this you know, piece on the transom area, um, not loving the uh, grain pattern in it. It's weird a little bit. Um, you really didn't notice it until you put the varnish on it. So uh, it is what it is. It's in. Uh, it's interesting uh, by any means. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's in there and um, uh, it's grown on me I guess a little bit. But anyways, uh, so I guess we'll just get into the pictures. Uh, not much more. Uh, the pictures are going to describe what happened. Uh, basically cut it, screwed and glued it with epoxy and um, Plugged the holes, sanded it down, and uh, he was just about ready for the, um, the cover boards to go on. So uh, let's check out the pictures.
all I really had to do to prep the uh, area for cover boards was to uh, uh, sand down the tops of the trim pieces so it was flush with the plywood that I had already installed. Um, I used the power plane to start and then to finish it off and uh, get it down to where I needed it I used a just a sand I just sanded it by hand with a long board or a sanding block. Once that was ready then I started um, fabricating the new cover boards. Now the original factory ones were basically three individual boards uh, with a rubber type of sealant in between them, similar to what you would do on a teak deck. Um, I didn't want to do it that way. Um, I wanted to make it almost as if it was one, um, I'll call it a panel, uh, or one, one solid piece. I didn't want to mess around with the rubber stuff up here. So I tried something different. Now, I don't know if this is going to last. I, I don't really know. Um, it's part of an experiment. So um, take it as you will. I'll find out. Um, seems to be lasting okay so far. Um, hasn't really seen weather, but it has seen uh, heat and cold cycles. And it really hasn't also seen uh, actual usage where the boat may be twisting around and moving. So we'll find out how it works in the end. And it uh, could be a hero or it could, uh, could be a total flop. Uh, but we'll find out. Um, so anyways, I've made these as panels. Um, using three individual boards. Now, to still get the look of the factory rubber in between the boards, I used Epe again, but I had some really dark colored Epe. Um, the Epe that I used on the rub rails was very dark. And so that gives the contrast between. So I cut strips of that about an eighth inch wide on my table saw and put those in between the individual um, planks. Um, so you're going to see that in the video, and that'll explain it a little more by just seeing pictures, I think. Uh, so to join them together, I used thickened epoxy. Um, really cleaned it well with acetone. I actually took my um, oscillating tool with a saw blade on it and kind of roughened up the edge surfaces just to give something more for the epoxy to bite into. wasn't really sure how epoxy and epay kind of mixed together, uh, even though I used it on the rub rails, but I still was a little leery about it. Um, so I followed more of what you would do for attaching uh, teak, uh, which is cleaning with acetone and all this business here. So anyways, I, I did that method. I just clamped the little dividing strips onto individual planks first, and then joined all three planks together to form the panel. And to join those, I used biscuits and epoxy. Um, so each individual seam had actual biscuits in there as well. And I've shown how I did that in uh, previous videos. So you're going to see that. Um, the dif difficult part on the two side um, pieces was um, cutting around the uh, air intakes, kind of a regular shape. Uh, for that I made a, I call a female um, template of the actual shape and then put it down on top and traced it and cut it and actually used the uh, template as a, uh, a guide for my router bit. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find that template. I know it's around here somewhere. I knew I didn't get rid of it, but I can't find it. So you're just going to have to uh, visualize it. Um, but I will show uh, similar templates uh, when I put in some little corner pieces. I'll show those so you'll get an idea what I'm talking about there. Um, as far as the piece around the back, at the transom. I did that in two individual pieces. Um, the factory had a seam in the middle there as well. So, um, and, you know, there's this port and starboard piece. I had to match them up. So it was a lot of fiddling and fitting to get these things to fit right. And um, yeah, so you're going to see all that. I had to cut holes for hose pipes and um, fuel uh, filling. Um, hardware and that kind of stuff. Um, tried to keep the holes to a minimum so I didn't put any uh, rod holders or anything in there at this time. I'm going to try to go without those um, even though it is a fishing boat. Um, I'll do mostly cruising in this boat anyways but when, when I get to fishing and get into that kind of thing I'll, I'll add rod holders where I want them uh, in the future. So anyways you're going to see, um, see those things being cut and fit and all that kind of business. Um, and uh, yeah, so then we'll uh, I'll show those pictures. Um, we'll take a break, and um, then we'll um, get into the um, next phase, which actually was installing. So this is just the uh, fabrication and uh, fit up phase of it. <laughs>
So before we move on to this thing, I have to show my poor little tripod, which I dropped many times and repaired many times, and I'm kind of tired of doing it, so I'm going to get something else. Um, you know, I don't spend any money on any equipment here on this channel, so I really can't justify it. But, um, yeah, she, her base broke a few times. This one dropped six feet off the uh, ladder I had it propped on with the camera on it. Thankfully, the camera didn't hit first, but the uh, legs did. So, anyways. Okay, now that everything was fitting good, um, it was time to install the four pieces. Um, to install the pieces, I sanded the plywood down to 80 grit. The back side of the um, actual panels themselves, I used my oscillating saw with a saw blade on it to kind of score the back all over to give the epoxy something to grip into. Um, and then in between the panels, where the panels met each other, I used biscuits and thickened epoxy to join those joints. Uh, you're also going to see on some of the, um, the panel joints uh, where there's some epoxy on there, unthickened epoxy. I was finding a few pinholes here and there where I actually had joined the panel, panels together. Um, and so I decided to go over all the joints with a uh, special hardener um, epoxy mixture that had a little UV in it, um, just to make sure that I filled all those pinholes. Uh, so when I varnish later, I wouldn't have to worry about all that stuff. So um, that's what you're going to see. Um, so let's check out the pictures. Uh, also, in the corners, there are some corner pieces I had to fabricate, which were a little tricky things. Uh, so we'll go over those after I show the installation of the, these four main panels.
talk about the um, corner pieces, I'd rather show the templates I used. Now, when I was talking about templating around the um, air intakes with a female, this is what I would consider a female template, and then this would be the male template that fits in it. So that's what you're going to see with that. And I've used this templating material before. Uh, I've talked about it before as well. So this would have been the uh, corner piece here. Um, and the factory, I just copied the factory ones. Um, and to cut out uh, the areas on the actual panels that I just showed putting in, I used this. I double-sided tape to those panels and then used my router and used this actually for the uh, router bearing to run on. And I cut them that way. That was pretty simple. Uh, when it came to this, using this template, um, I double-sided taped it onto a rough cut piece of ePay and tried to cut this out in my um, my little mini router table. And uh, just about lost a finger doing it. Um, it was having trouble on this corner right here. And I said, that's not too, uh, too safe. So um, I ended up just rough cutting it out, putting this on there, and then using my drill with a drum, large drum type sanding bit and just going over it until I got close to this piece without actually touching this piece. And so I use these templates on both sides. This says star for starboard side and then if you flip them over uh, you got the port side ones. So uh, that's what I use to uh, make these corner pieces and I just installed them with um, screws and epoxy and um, yeah you'll see that um, being installed and a few other things and um, that's where I think we're going to end it. So uh, let's check out those pictures. do it uh, for this video. Uh, as you can see I'm here at the boat. Uh, I'm going to try to get some work done today. It's about 26 degrees Fahrenheit so I don't know how long I'll last in this cold but uh, this is what I'm in for for the next uh, four months or so I'm afraid. Um, and I wanted to get over to the boat to close this out. I haven't been over here for about two weeks. Um, sorry I really didn't get to the varnishing uh, portion of these cover boards. That kind of was my intention when I set up this video but uh, once it gets over 20 minutes, you know, I feel like um, it's getting too long and I gotta stop it. So this is well over that. So we'll see it first thing in the next video. So, and hopefully you like this one and you come back to uh, see how everything really turned out in the end. Um, so with that, um, you know, everyone have a good one and uh, we'll see you really soon right here on uh, Renovations Workbook.